Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 28. Day 28. Third edition, third edition, day 28 of third edition. We are on page number 232. Please turn to it. Make sure the book is in front of you. Turn to page number 232. We are going to do problem number 8 and 9 in this video. Let's get going. As I said, make sure the book is in front of you. Otherwise, you will have difficulty following. Problem number 8. We are simply being asked to determine which of the statements are true. So, one by one we are going to go and we can establish whether the statement is true or false. Question number 8, A says negative 5 is less than 3.1, obviously negative 5 is less than 3.1, B says there is no explanation there, the square root of 6 is, is equal to 4. Now this is a tricky one because square root, of, square root of 6 technically, technically square root of 6 can be either positive 4 or negative 4. If it is positive 4 then it is correct, but if, it's, if it if the square of 16 happens to be negative 4 in the, in the, in the context, then of course it will not... For square of six, to say that square of 16 is, is 4 is actually not incorrect because it is 4. It is also negative 4. It is also negative 4. Let's move on. Statement number C says... The statement C says that 7 divided by 0 is equal to 0. And that is incorrect. That is false. Why? Because any number, any number divided by zero, if you divide any number by zero, it becomes infinity, not zero. N stands for any number. Any number divided by zero, any number divided by zero is infinity. So that statement is wrong. Seven divided by zero equals infinity. Seven divided by zero would equal infinity, not zero. And that's correct. That's incorrect. Let's move on. We are on answer choice D. We are on, on problem D. Let me change this marker. This marker, I don't know why I picked it up. It doesn't seem to have any life. It's morbid. D. D says the zero is less than absolute value of negative one seventh. And what's the absolute value of negative one seventh? Absolute value of negative one seventh, absolute value of negative one seventh is positive one seventh. And of course, this thing is positive one seventh, and of course, positive one seventh, zero is less than positive one seventh. That is correct. Zero is less than positive one seventh. E says these are these are socially that uh, it's kind of strange for even go to go through them like this one by one. One, it says 0.3 is less than one third, which is true because one third is equal to 0.33 repeating. It just goes on and on. 0.3333 repeating, of course, is going to be greater than 0.3. Or if you want to think in terms of money, if you want to think of in terms of money, a third of a dollar is approximately 33 cents. A third of a dollar is approximately 33 cents, whereas three tenths of a dollar is 30 cents, and of course, 30 cents is less than 33 cents. Let's go to F. F says, F says that negative 1 raised to 87 is equal to negative 1. And that is true. Because if we have a we have a negative number, we have a negative number being raised to an odd power. A negative number raised to an odd power will remain negative. So negative 1 raised to an odd power, whether it is 87 or 87, uh, 87 uh, I was going to say 87,000, but 87,000 would turn it into a positive power because 87,000 is an even number. As long as it's raised to an odd power, it will remain negative 1. That is correct. And this one was correct. We are at F. Let's continue. G says... G says the square root of negative 3 squared is less than 0. But negative 3 squared is equal to 9. So the square root of negative 3 squared is the same as the square root of negative, negative 9. And again, 
it's a tricky one because square root of 9 can be either positive 3, positive 3 or negative 3. Or negative 3. And it tells us that what it tells us that is this quantity is less than less than 0. Well it depends. It depends. If if we if it turns out that we're dealing with square square root of negative 3 squared, if it turns out that we're dealing with positive root, if we're dealing with positive root, then it is not equal to 0. But if it turns out that we're dealing with a negative root, the same as square root of 9, which is positive or negative, if it's negative, if it's negative 3, if we're dealing with a negative root, then it is true, it is, it is less than 0. So I don't know why they give you questions like this where there is a, there is a room for ambiguity. Question number, question number G it was. I'm just going to quickly look at the next page. The answers are on the next page. Actually, the answers are on the same, uh, on the opposite page. What does it say for G? For G, it says square, it says square root of 9 is 3, and therefore, yes, yeah, square root of 9 is 3, and it is not less than 0, but square root of 9 can also be negative 3, in which case it will be true. It depends. The book is not very clear on this thing. It depends on whether we're dealing with positive root or negative root. That was G. H says, H says, 21 over 28 is equal to 3 quarter. Let's find out, shall we? 21 over 28, they share a common factor of 7. And if you were to divide top and bottom by 7, 21 indeed has 3 7. And 28 is made up of 4 7. So it's, it is 3 quarter. It is correct. It is correct. I debated. I went back and forth many times whether or not I should be doing this problem because they are too silly. They are too silly. I is negative of absolute value of negative three, 23. It says is equal to 23. Let's find out, shall we? Absolute value of negative 23. Absolute value of negative 23 is positive 23. And then if you insert, if you insert a negative sign in front of it, if you insert a negative sign in front of it right here, then we have to put a negative sign here and it becomes like this. In which case, now we're talking about absolute value of negative 23, absolute value of negative 23 is positive 23 and we have a negative sign in front of it which, which boils down to, which equals negative 23, not positive 23. This is not correct. I is wrong. H was correct. I is wrong. I is not correct. I is not a valid statement. Let's go to J. J says one half, one half is greater than one seventeenth. Of course, one half is greater than one seventeenth because one half uh, is is half a dollar. It's half a dollar. This is going to be think of this as twentieth of a dollar. Twenty of a dollar is almost almost. Uh, this is going to be a little more than twenty pennies. Whereas this is fifty cents. This is in fact correct. This is in fact correct. Do you know how we can figure out very quickly whether or not it's correct? Well, this is the trick. This is one half. This is one, one seventeen. The correct procedure is this. Correct procedure is this. Is, is, is as follows. Multiply this side by seventeen over seventeen. Multiply that side by seventeen over seventeen. This is a long procedure. We don't need it here, but I'm just showing you the procedure. The next thing, multiply. We want to get rid of this two. Multiply this side by two over two. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Here is what we need to do. We want to get rid of the 17, multiply both sides by 17. And we want to get rid of 2, multiply both sides by 2. That's what I meant to do. Watch what happens. Of course, we're not going to do all of, the, all of this thing. There is a quicker way, but this is what you do. Multiply both sides by 2 times 17. This will get rid of 2 here, and this will get rid of 17 here. And what we end up here on this side, what we end up on this side is 17. And 17 is indeed greater than 2. That's why this is correct. This is correct. In other words, let me give you another example. Let me give you another example. For example, if somebody asks us which fraction is bigger, which fraction is bigger, 5 6 or 6 7? Which fraction is bigger? That's very simple. Which fraction is bigger? They're asking us this. Is this correct? 
five six is smaller than six seven. Is it correct? What was the, what's the quick what's the quick way? The quick way is this: multiply both sides by six times seven. And what happens? The seven drops out, and the six drop out. The seven that was there ends up here, and the six that was here ends up here. So the quick way is this. Quick way is this. Five six. Five six is le five six versus six seven. Which one is bigger? It's very simple. Bring the seven up here and bring the six there. Seven times se five times seven is thirty-five, and six times six is thirty-six. So this guy is bigger. Six seven is bigger. This is wrong. Six seven is bigger. Oh, that that is exactly what he said here. That's right. Six seven is bigger. Five six is smaller because this turned out this side turned out to be thirty-five. That side turned out to be thirty-six. Do you understand? There's two strange one here. How about so? Sometimes they do ask you things like this in the quantity comparison question. They do ask you 9/11th versus let's say 13th, 14th. This is going to require some comp comp competition. So 13 times 11 is what this is going to be. 13 times 11, and this time it's going to be 9 times 14. 14 times 9, and whichever turns out to be bigger, that that that's that side is bigger. So let's do 13 times 11. 11 times 3 is 33. 11 times 3 is 33, 3, carry 3, and 11 times 1 is 11, plus 3 is 14, 143. What do we get here? 9 for the, 9 for the 36, 6, carry 3, 9 plus 3 is 12. Oh, this is much smaller. This thing is much smaller. This guy is bigger. Oh, of course it's bigger. What was I thinking? This is almost 1, whereas this is 9, 11, it's far, much far, farther than, than, than the, from 1 than it is, because this is only a difference of 1, this is a difference of 2 here. Anyway, we spent too much time on it. That was J. K says, K says, 59 raised to third times 59 squared. This cube is outside, makes no difference. And we are told that this is equal to 59 raised to 6. Is it correct? Is that what it says? Let's just double check, make sure I didn't make a mistake. Yep, that's what it says. So what are we supposed to do? When we have exponents like this, we're supposed to add the exponents. It's 59 raised to 3 plus 2, which is equal to 59 raised to 5, which is not equal to 59 raised to 6. This is not equal to, this is wrong. This quantity on the left hand side boils down to 59 raised to 5. We do not multiply the exponents, we add the exponents. The very last one, the very last one, which is this one was K, L. L says negative of square root of 25, negative of square root of 25 is less than negative 4. In case, you, in case you want to look at the real problems dealing with fractions, how to compare them, it just occurred to me, just type in comparing fractions. Comparing fractions along with my name. I am fairly certain, I'm almost 80-90% sure that something will pop up. Just search it. I'm going to do the same thing when the video is over. In the search area, just type in comparing fraction and then put in Keshwani. And I think you will find something there. There always is something. I shouldn't say always is a very strong statement, but most of the time you'll find something. Anytime you, you, you're confused about certain concept of mathematics, just type in the name of the concept and my name and something should pop up. I'm, I'm fairly sure. So I have over, over 2,000 videos on the channel. There should be something there. All right. So, is this true? What well, square root, square root twenty five is five. Square root twenty five is five and becomes negative five. And negative five is indeed negative five is indeed less than negative four. That is correct. But then again, the square root twenty five is technically square root twenty five is technically positive or negative five. This is what it should be. Square root twenty five is positive or negative twenty five. If it's positive. If it's positive 5, then positive 5 with a negative in front of it, it will become negative 5, and negative 5 is indeed less than this is correct. But if it turns out, if it turns out that we're dealing with, it turns out that we're dealing with a negative root, then square root of 25 is also negative 5. A negative 5, a negative and a negative will become positive 5, in which case it is not true. In which case it is not true. It depends on which root they're talking about. They don't make it very clear. But in the answer choices, for some reason, they are very sure of it. That they are dealing with positive root, but there is no reason why it cannot be negative root. Let's do number nine. Number nine, 
Number nine has four problems, four percentage problems. We're going to do the four percentage problem. Also, I forgot to tell you, these problems that we're doing right now, these problems that we are in the process of doing right now are the exact same problems that appeared already in the first and the second editions. If you're interested in watching the original solutions, because in the original solutions I do a lot of extra stuff if you, and if they go at a slower pace, this is also very slow, but anyway, if you're interested in watching original solutions, you will find the original solutions to all the problems from day number 83, 84, 85, and 86. And in addition to that, after I finish doing the percentage problems, the four problems that we're about to do, question number nine, after I finish doing those four problems, I did some bonus percentage problems. That's what it says here, bonus percentage problems. And for that, you'll find the, the 87 and 88. Something a little bit more challenging, you understand? The ones that we're about to do, they're very straightforward, quite, quite simple. Problem number A, 9A. We're asking us 40% of 15. 40% of 15. There are several ways we can go about it. So I'm going to show you one or two ways. We know 10%, we know 10% of 15 would equal 1.5. If 10% equals 1.5, we don't want 10%, we want 40%. If we want 40%, how do we make it 40%? Well, it's very simple. Multiply both sides of the equation by 4. So 4 times 10 now becomes 40%. Since we multiply this side by 4, we have to multiply that side by 4. And that's it. 1.5 times 4 is 6. 1.5 times 4 is 6. Another way we could have done it is that to realize that 40 percent is 2 fifth. 40 percent means 2 fifth. Off means times 15. Divide top and bottom by 5. 5 is goes away. 15 becomes 3. And 3 times 2 is 6. Do you understand? Very straightforward. Part B. Part B is asking for part B is asking us for 150 percent of 48. 150 percent of 48. How do we go about it? Again, we can go in a very traditional way, or we can look at it this way. We know we know 100 percent. We know 100 percent of 48 is 48. That we do know. We are not interested in 100 percent. We don't want to know what 100% is, we want to know what 150% is. Well, that's very simple. Add on the 50% to it. Add on the 50% and you will have your 150%. If 100% is 48, 100% of 48 is 48, obviously. 50% must be half of it, which is 24. Add them up and you're done. 12, 2, carry 1, and set. there we go. It turns out that 150% is equal to 72. Let's do part C. Let's do part C. Part C says 0.6 percent, 0.6 percent of 800. And again, you can set it up in a very classical way if you wanted to, very, very methodically, very arithmetically. You could do that, or you can just build it up. So here we go. We know one percent. Here's what we're going to do. We know one percent is equal to one percent of 800. One percent of 800 is eight. Would you agree? Of course, one percent. 1% of 8. I do not write everything down, but that's what we're saying here. When you say 1% equals 8, we, it's a, uh, of course we understand that we're, we're talking about 800. 1% of 800 is 8. Or technically, I should have written it down. 1% of 800 is 8. Agree? If 1% is 8, if you multiply both sides of the equation by 6, then 6% is going to be 48. Are you with me? 6% is equal to 48. 8, 6, 8, 6, 48. We don't want 6%, we want 0.6%. Well, that's very simple. Divide both sides by 10. 6 divided by 10 is 0.6. So there we go, 0.6. And then percentage sign right here. 0.6% is 48 divided by 10, which is 4.8. Do you understand? Let's go to part D. We don't want to get stuck at one problem for too long. Part D says... Part D says 15 is 30% of what? 15 is 30% of what? Well, we can, again, we have a couple of ways. We can set it up traditionally or we can find some quick and dirty way. We'll do it both ways. If you want to set it up in a traditional manner, then here's the equation. It says 15 is means equal. Then we have 30. Percent means over 100, off means times, 
and what is our unknown. Let's isolate dx, let's separate dx by itself, multiply both sides by 100 and divide both sides by, or oh, better yet, let's get rid of the zeros first. Let's multiply both sides by 10, so we get 15 times 10 equals 3x, divide both sides by 3, and we'll have the x by itself. And we just will reduce it. Divide top and bottom by 3, 3 is going to go away, 15 becomes 5, 5 3 is a 15, there we go, 5 times 10 is the answer, x equals 50, x equals 50. But that was one way. That was one way. Here's another way. Here's another way. We know 15, 50, 15 represents 30 percent. We know that we know that 15 is 30 percent. How do we know that? Because they tell us that. If 15 is 30 percent, divide both sides by 3. Watch what happens. Divide both sides by 3. If 15 is 30 percent, then 5, 15 divided by 3 is 5, must be 30 divided by 3, which is 10 percent. We don't want 10%, we want the whole thing. So multiply both sides by 10. 5 times 10 is 50, and 50 must be 10 times 10, which is 100%. 100% of the quantity must represent 50. That's all. There is no right or wrong way. Just do whatever comes to you naturally, but try not to use calculator too much. It's not a good idea. Last one, part E. Part E says 11 is what percentage of 55? Oh, this is too silly. 11 is what percentage of 55? We simply have to realize, we simply have to realize that 11 is one fifth. One fifth of 55, isn't it? 11 is one fifth of 55. If it's one fifth, one fifth of anything, one fifth of anything is 20%. That's it. 11 must be 20% of 55. How do we know that? Because it happens to be exactly fifth of it. A fifth of anything is 20%. If you don't like it this way, and if you if you are in, if you if you're hell bent, if you're hell bent on doing it the proper way, the the, the arithmetic way, we can do that too. But only if you insist. Only if you're hell bent. As I said, here we go. 11 is means equal, what is our unknown quantity, percent means over 100, times off means times 55. Let's multiply both sides by 100 and divide by 55 so we can isolate the x. So x is going to be 11 times 100 over 55 and we are almost done. Divide top and bottom by 11, 11 is going to go away and 55 is going to become 5. Divide top and bottom by 5, 5 is going to go away and 100 becomes 20. Which is exactly what we said. It's 20%. X, our x, our unknown is 11 is what percent? We just found out it's 20% of 55. Right here, x equals 20. That's what we're going to do today. I don't want to uh, start the other problems. But as I said, if you want to watch some bonus percentage problem, let it be something more challenging, watch day 87, 88. Just type in GRE math, GRE math day 87. And 88 and watch those videos and do those problems with me okay bye now